keep people coming along. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Seth Kirshner. I'm currently an assistant vice president and security engineer at MUFG Securities Americas. Um, and so just a little bit of background context, and this talk's going to be focusing on my experience with Deloitte. So that was my prior employer. Um, and currently in my role, I oversee application and data security for a whole entire business unit. Um, and I have a lot of fun uh, building DevSecOps programs out uh, from the ground up and threat and vulnerability management. Um, and that's a lot what I focused at, at Deloitte. And so I'll talk a lot about that as well. Um, so as a little bit of background context, uh, when I was previously uh, with Deloitte, um, a little going into the journey, right? Um, so I graduated from Stevens Institute of Technology in Hoboken, New Jersey back in 2018. Um, during my journey while I was at the school, uh, I ended up building a health tech company in post to help post-traumatic stress disorder and trauma sufferers. Uh, and my background was in IT. I spent several years working with IT managed service providers. I did my own IT consulting. Um, and then I really wanted to figure out, okay, like, you know, in the health tech industry, you can really impact people and you can make people's lives better. But what I really wanted is how can I have even a larger impact? And so that's what drew me to cybersecurity. It was a really great intersection of helping people, helping technology, helping companies. And at the same time, you get to learn the businesses that you work with, you get to learn the tech itself, and you get to learn all the cybersecurity tools. So you are constantly learning and constantly having to innovate um, and always keep up with you know, the offensive and, and attacker. So it's great to have this talk afterwards because a lot of my work with Deloitte was um, on the defensive side or sort of blue team. Uh, and in my current role, I do, I do most of that as well. Um, so ensuring that defenses are up to date and that everyone uh, is well protected, your, your clients, your companies, et cetera. Um, so when I was uh, at Stevens Institute of Technology, I networked like crazy trying to get roles. Um, during the nighttime, I'm, I'm even a career coach now. I help other people, uh, you know, help land their dream jobs. And so I really want to go into consulting for a couple of reasons. Um, I, I didn't want my day-to-day -day job to be sort of the same. Um, I really wanted every day to be a new challenge. And that's one of the greatest parts about consulting is like when you go and ask like someone at EY or PwC or uh, Bain or any of the big consulting companies at Accenture, like, what do you do on a day to day basis? It's really difficult for them to be able to give you an answer. Uh, and the reason being is because your day to day is dramatically different <laughs> in many cases. Um, and so when I was an intern with Deloitte, uh, I ended up interning there my junior year. Um, it was about an eight week program at the time. They had just acquired a company called Vigilant. Um, they were about a 65, 70 person team. They did a lot of work in, in DevSecOps and in threat and vulnerability management, application security. Um, and they were mostly technical folks. And so my internship experience with Deloitte uh, was helping them build out a service offering for a new attack surface management that they were gonna bring to market. And what that meant is they were gonna pretty much build like a templated proposal and then go to various different clients that they had. Um, Deloitte is one of the big four. They work with hundreds of thousands, almost 25% of the Fortune 1000 um, as known for audit and tax and, and tax advisory. Uh, I guess in professional services is, is sort of their bigger name now. Um, and in that case, uh, so I got a chance to join this new startup that they just acquired um, and their little team, they were based in Jersey City uh, in New Jersey. And I got to sit in an office. Um, I came in, so like eight week program, right? The first couple of weeks uh, or the first couple of days, I was in a huge meeting and they were having the midpoint of review of how are we gonna develop this attack surface management offering and bring it to market. So I got a chance to work on actually developing like the proposal kit that all the salespeople were gonna use in the organization, all the partners and principals to go to their client and actually sell them um, this, this offering. Uh, and then I had a client, they were a financial services client as well. So that's one of the cool parts about consulting is that you get to do a lot of internal initiatives, such as building up new sales techniques or finding new clients um, and learning how to sell cybersecurity services while also doing the actual work with your client. Um, and you get a chance to do both as well as other initiatives. Um, and quite frankly, you meet a whole lot of people, you network a lot. And that's really one of the greatest parts. So um, I got a chance to build out the server service offering over eight weeks. I did some you know, metrics and reporting work for a financial services client. At the end of my internship, they gave me an offer to come back full time. And I was like, this is perfect. Um, and it was really great to like showcase a lot of the technical expertise that I had growing up and like my uh, interest in cybersecurity um, and get sort of learn on the job. My degree was in business, um, so I didn't have any uh, formal cybersecurity training during my collegiate endeavors. 
Uh, but nonetheless, um, you know, it's, the greatest part about cybersecurity is that you can learn outside of the classroom. Um, and in many cases, that's what I did. So coming into fall of, of 2018, I was now starting my full-time role at Deloitte um, upon graduation. And um, it was a really interesting opportunity. So I got thrown into a threat and vulnerability management team as an infrastructure security consultant. Um, and within my team, there was you know, a pen testing team, there's offensive, there's defensive. Um, so within my team, we were in that attack surface management. So it was kind of cool. What I built in my internship actually ended up being the team that I joined. Um, and pretty much our main role and responsibility was to work with Fortune 100, Fortune 500 organizations, public, private um, companies as well, and build threat and vulnerability management programs from the ground up. So how does an organization actually function when you're trying to scan all your infrastructure, when you're trying to mitigate risk, when you're trying to build up your gold images, when you're trying to migrate to the cloud and, and piece it all together. So building the processes, the systems, um, configuring tools, sometimes they were as hands on or as hands off as possible doing tool configurations. We would take like a network access controller, configure it with Koala. So for example, um, if there's a new device that joins into your corporate network, it will get sandboxed and then Qualys will automatically scan uh, that particular device. And then if it's clean and, and there's no vulnerabilities and if it's at an acceptable baseline, then it will um, allow that, uh, it, it will move it away out of the sandbox and actually allow it to join the network. Um, so there's cool like tool configurations that you can do that when you have a lot of systems in place, you can really help companies defend against malicious actors um, and attackers that come into your environment. Uh, and so for the first like three months when I joined Deloitte, um, I was on, I was an, actually on an application security offensive testing team. Um, and you have to like keep in mind that like, like I said, I didn't have any formal training in application security. Um, I, I knew what OWASP was and I knew what OS top 10 was, um, but I never really had a chance to do like code reviews for a client, for example. I never had a chance to go into a, a, a big organization and sort of break their stuff. Like, that, you know, at the end of the day, like cybersecurity is in the industry of saying no a lot of the times to many stakeholders. So in this case, uh, the client that I had, they were trying to push um, a, a, a public uh, website out. Um, they were going to have thousands and thousands of users, probably close to a million or two million users. Um, and we were just brought in as Deloitte to do a uh, essentially a web application security test, uh, a pen test. So um, I got a chance to work through the night because that was my testing window. So they gave me, it was 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. Pacific time, and I'm on the East Coast. Uh, so I got a chance to fly out to California, meet um, a, a lot of my clients sort of um, head staff and then uh, get all my credentials, get into the building, everything, go back to the East Coast and get to work, right? Uh, so in many cases, I would be up uh, through the night just sort of doing my work and then during the day having a chance to relax. And so the cool part about consulting is that sometimes um, you never really know what type of project you're going to be on initially um, or what type of work you're going to be given, uh, especially as sort of like a new hire coming in. So um, I was just put on this project. I was trained a little bit. I had a lot of coworkers to work with. I ended up using tools like Fortify and Web Inspect, um, Burp Suite uh, to be able to perform a lot of these um, sort of templated attacks. Like we had a playbook that we would use and then um, also manual pen testing where I got a chance to use uh, Burp Suite Pro to you know, maliciously try to break this website as many times as possible. Um, I ended up finding about uh, a give or take 115 vulnerabilities in this web application, including critical uh, path manipulation, being able to do some uh, pretty crazy stuff and extract a lot of data. Uh, obviously, the CISO of this organization was, was not happy because they had to delay their production out significantly um, in order to release their, uh, release their application uh, without any of these major vulnerabilities. But like, that's our job. That's what we were paid to do. Um, and so in many cases, that was my first experience going into big four. So I was like, okay, like I came from not really knowing cybersecurity to becoming a web app pen tester in like maybe three months. <laughs> and now I was getting ready for my other assignment. So the cool part about consulting in general is like, A, a lot of the times, like for my first about 16 months with the firm, um, I flew every Monday through Thursday or Sunday through Friday uh, to wherever my client's location or locations were throughout I was mostly in the United States, but I do have colleagues that went international as well. Um, and that's where I was able to do my work. So obviously things have changed a little bit because of COVID, but nonetheless, it's, it's sort of a similar concept. You get a resource manager. Um, this resource manager will look at your background, your skill sets, what you focus in, and then they'll look at upcoming projects that are in the pipeline, the sales pipeline. 
um, and they'll pretty much figure out like, are you a good fit based on your level with the organization, based on your uh, knowledge, maybe they focus on industry, for example, uh, and then they try to align you with an upcoming project. But constantly throughout the like Deloitte, for example, um, or any other big four, many times you're reapplying for roles. And what I mean by that is like, not only do you have to get into the organization, but then if you want to get on the cool projects, you actually have to like submit your resume or your bio or your CV um, again to the manager of the project, to the partner that might be leading the project um, and pitch yourself constantly, like why you're a good fit for the team. Um, and so in many cases, my second project was going to be a nine month uh, threat and vulnerability management implementation for a big manufacturing company. Um, so they had, you know, they had Qualys in place. They had maybe one or two people managing threat and vulnerability management, uh, but it really wasn't enough for them to, you know, they didn't have any processes, they didn't have any procedures, they didn't have a policy, they didn't have guidelines, they didn't really know how to configure the tools as well as they could or take advantage of them. Um, so we were tasked with going into the organization uh, and building out all these things over the next nine months as hands-on and hands-off. So sometimes it was just like, we need to go to leadership and explain to them why it's important to scan some of these uh, systems that are that are producing or manufacturing all their goods. Um, but the issue was, right, and in, and in a lot of cases, what people don't realize is that cybersecurity is very much like an operations and, and business um, piece of the puzzle as it is the technical cybersecurity. Um, and so in this particular case, we had to go to the business uh, leads, the CFO, the COO of this massive manufacturing organization and explain to them why we needed to take down these manufacturing systems and scan them. Um, so this has been like 20 years. These things were in production. Um, they're not internet facing, which is good. Uh, but in many cases, like we, if one of these systems went down, they were losing upwards of 10 to $100 million a second. Um, so that's how much goods were being produced. And, and many of these um, operating systems were obviously legacy at this time, because a lot of these systems that they were using were built, you know, in the early 2000s or late 90s. Um, and you'll see that it's very common with organizations to have a lot of legacy infrastructure, technical debt, uh, and that comes out of working with clients. So this nine month implementation project, I got a chance to uh, engage with the chief information security officer, directly engage with all of his deputy leads, um, engage with the head of threat and vulnerability management, conduct interviews, actually do some of the technical configuration, write custom scripts for some tools, um, and build out this whole entire program, do a three-year roadmap for how the program can grow, how to bring in operational technology. Um, in, in our case, I, I believe we use like Dragos, for example, was our, our go-to-market partner. Uh, so we use Dragos to like you know, integrate it into the threat and vulnerability management program, um, and then also look at their cloud journey ahead. Um, and, and so in many cases, like that was a really excellent opportunity. And I always say like one of the differences between going into consulting versus going into a like different type of firm, for example, if you go into like tele telecommunications or Google or whatever, um, many cases at those firms, like when you join at a college, you'll be like a security staff one or security staff two, where you become an analyst and an associate. And you're very much like put in one particular area. So I have a lot of friends, like one of my like really good friends, uh, when she graduated from college, she went to work for AT&T. And, you know, she became a staff engineer one, a staff engineer two, staff engineer three, manager one, manager two, manager three, et cetera. And like oftentimes when you're in those organizations, especially when they're really, really big organizations, you don't really have a chance to like engage with chief information security officers and other C-suite executives um, on a consistent basis. And so can, can, in, can, in contrast to that, when you're with a big consulting company, many cases, like those are your first clients. So like I said, when I had my first client at Deloitte, I met this chief information security officer, like my first day, like he was my, my contact. He was the person I worked with. Uh, when I sent out pen testing, like I'm starting my tests, like they went out to the, to the CISO and I would engage with him on a daily basis. Um, on my second client, we had conversations with the CISO almost on a weekly basis. And so one of the biggest differences is that you get the exposure, like that's almost years of knowledge and, and experience in a much shorter time frame than you may working at a big company. Um, but in the other case, like when you do work at a big company, you also get to like be the hands-on implementer and see things grow. A lot of the times when you are in a consulting, like uh, Deloitte, for example, we do a lot of cybersecurity assessments. And what I mean by that is a new CISO um, or, uh, you know, CIO or CTO will come into their role and they want to get 
a security posture assessment done against their organization. If you look at like a capability maturity model index, um, essentially a one to five scale of, of where is your organization and how are they doing and how are they progressing? Are there any weak areas? Are there any areas where they're doing really well? And so a Deloitte, for example, or a PwC or a KPMG or an EY and Accenture, uh, IBM, et cetera, uh, can come in and perform these uh, risk assessments and essentially help the, the chief information security officer when he takes on his new role, understand the landscape, understand the business, understand where they're doing really well and where they're not doing so good. So they know where to prioritize funding, where they know to prioritize their efforts, if they need to bring in and hire additional staff, where that needs to happen. Um, and so in many cases, like you'll go in, you'll do these assessments. These assessments can range anywhere from like two months to six months or somewhere in between. Some are short, some are really long. Um, and in many cases, they're not technical at all, right? They're just business assessments. You go and do a lot of stakeholder interviews. You do a, a gap assessment. You might finish the assessment and then sort of create a roadmap and help them help the CISO strategically prioritize like what the next six months, what the next 18 months, what the next three years look like and, and help them build that journey and then be there as the supporting implementers um, as needed, right? So let's say they're, they're really struggling on their SIM and they don't have good threat intelligence coming into their organization. After uh, you perform this assessment, like you will then come in, help them build the roadmap, and then the CISO might say, hey, we, we don't have enough people right now to be able to uh, build out our SIM and build the use cases for our incident response, et cetera. Uh, so Deloitte, for example, or EY, can you come in and help us uh, with these tasks? And so in many cases, when you, we would do these assessments, it would lead to follow-up work. Um, so the cool part, uh, I would say, is that, like I mentioned before, you have a chance to both be on the sales side because you're constantly trying to sell more work and get more revenue for your consulting firm but you're also trying to do the work at the same time and really help secure your clients environments um so i throughout the time i, I worked in financial services industry i worked in consumer products i worked in life sciences and healthcare i worked in government and public sector um, i worked with the legal with a couple legal, legal firms um, and just to give you a range of all the opportunities. So I was only at Deloitte for two years, um, like I said, as in primarily infrastructure security, but I did a little web app testing. Um, I got a chance to work on cloud assessments. Um, I got a chance to actually do threat and vulnerability management in AWS or Azure environments. Um, and I got to do board gaming. So I got to like sort of build out the whole entire, here's how someone did. And then we went to an organization we would conduct, um, you know, sort of, uh, exercises uh, with them um, to see how their, you know, C-suite, for example, or how their uh, technical staff would react in the case of there was an incident, um, test all their playbooks, test all their information. Um, I got a chance to do uh, sort of manage services. And, and what that means is um, in some cases you will, you will go and you'll just like do the work and you're done and you're out the door. Manage services is like you actually act as the team. So you're sort of like an augmented team. Um, so in the threat and vulnerability management space, for example, an augmented team would actually run the Qualys scans, they would run the results, they would work with all the stakeholders in the organization to disseminate the results and help remediate and, have, and help patch vulnerabilities within their environment. And so um, long story short, at the end of this whole entire experience, uh, I was able to leave Deloitte with so much knowledge and sort of fast track my career that, you know, when I when I moved over to MUFG Securities, I was able to have so much domain knowledge across several different areas, but also really strong in a couple um, that I was able to become like almost a one man army uh, just because consulting was able to grow me so much. Now, um, I do have to caveat it by saying consulting is obviously not for everyone, right? Um, if you're the type of person where you really like to focus on one particular area, consulting may not be the best fit for you because as you grow within a consulting organization, you do have to do a lot more than um, just the particular, like let's say you really like um, you know, writing automation for like SIM technology, right? Um, and you wanna be able to build really cool use cases. Like when you're in a consulting firm, you might be able to do that one project, but then your second project, you might be doing something completely non-technical and you're working on an assessment. Um, and so 
for some people like the track of going down consulting is really uh, interesting because you get a chance to work with so many different clients and gain that knowledge and experience. But for others, they do just want to be that technical implementer um, and really focus on the tech side, which is totally okay too. And you have to remember within cybersecurity, not everything's super technical. Um, in a lot of cases, it, it's not technical at all, actually. Like from a risk and controls point of view, many organizations spend you know a lot of time um, for audit, legal, or compliance requirements uh, building out controls uh, around all their security tools and technology. Uh, so that way, if an auditor or a regulator comes into the door, um, for example, in financial services, one of the most regulated industries, there are dozens of requirements that you need to meet that are non-technical in nature. Um, they might be utilizing the tool. You might need to go in and configure a tool in order to meet that requirement. Uh, but in many cases, they're, they're non-technical in nature. Um, and so, if, if you're the type of person that you don't like a lot of change, uh, I, would, I wouldn't recommend consulting to you because in consulting, there's a lot of change. So like on a day-to-day -day basis, this, these are the types of days that I would have. Um, I would you know, start my day depending on whatever time my client met. So I had some clients that started their day at 7 a.m. in the morning. Um, I had some clients that started their days at 10 a.m. Um, I had some clients that, you know, they wanted to meet every single day at 1230, like it didn't even matter. Um, I had some clients that worked weekends, some clients that didn't, but essentially because you're working as a consultant to a client, your client is now your boss. Like on top of your management and the partners and the principals within your actually organization, uh, now you also have to answer to your client and whatever your client says, like you got to do that work. So that's what you're signing up for. <laughs> um, but like I might wake up in a day, I'll get on a client call. I'll do a little bit of client work. I'll work on a PowerPoint deck that we need to present at the end of the week with a weekly status update. I'll go work on a proposal for a different client. I have another client that's going on at the same time. I have an offshore team that I need to manage and they'll send daily reports and I'll hop on morning and night calls with them. So that way we're working 24 seven around the clock. Um, and then in many cases as well, I'll have to do all that work um, and there might be an internal event that's going on. So for me at Deloitte, I had a chance to build and lead our uh, whole entire cyber innovation team and tech scouting team. So what we did is we were, uh, I, I built a team of about 25 um, and we went into the marketplace. And, and what I mean is like all the available startups, venture capital firms, incubators, accelerators, uh, and would try to look at startups that were doing really well in the market and then partner with them early on at Deloitte so that we, we could go to market together and build these sort of strategic relationships prior to any of our competitors trying to figure out that market. So in the two years that I was with Deloitte, we, we evaluated uh, about 720 startups. Um, it's crazy to think that the cyberspace is that large, but there is that many, there's, there's thousands, I would say north of 5,000 cybersecurity startups globally. Um, and so we would, you know, look at them, see what type of solution they were building. Are they really innovative? Do we have any clients that could use this technology now or help solve a problem? Um, and so in many cases, we were able to take that technology and actually go to our clients, do proof of concepts, see if it was providing value. Some of them were sort of automating manual tasks. Some of them were just like, um, for example, like Prisma, like when before Prisma, Palo Alto Networks Prisma is their cloud security posture management tool. Um, previously it was called Redlock. We like uh, built a really good relationship with them and we were able to go to market and sort of look at many different clients and, and, and help build uh, great relationships with them. Um, and so that's, that would be like another thing. So maybe I would have like two back-to-back -back startup calls in the same day. Um, and then I would have to write reports on them and then I would be working on a deck and then I'll go back to configuring Qualys for one of my clients. And then I'll get on a call to talk about a new project or a new initiative or a new sales tool. So you can see that on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, it's pretty crazy, right? <laughs> um, but the cool part is, is that you're, you're constantly challenged. You're constantly learning. You're constantly forced to innovate. You can do process improvements. You have a team of like Deloitte at, at one time was, I think one of the largest cybersecurity teams that we had about 5,000 cybersecurity practitioners globally operating in, in, a, in about like 80 countries or something like that. Um, I, and I'm probably, I'm probably even lower on those numbers. Um, and so you can imagine all the really great experience exposure that you're gonna get, not only from mentors, uh, but from advisors, from industry professionals. I had a chance to go out to conferences several years, um, to attend startup events, to represent Deloitte at uh, events in, in New York City. I led relationships with Team 8, which is a cybersecurity venture capital group in, in Israel, as well as Plug and Play Tech Center, which is a startup accelerator based in California. Um, and so 
in many cases, like while I was doing my work, doing my client work, um, you know, helping architect AWS environments for our clients or working on security assessments in, in the cloud space or doing threat and vulnerability management programs, et cetera. Um, I was also simultaneously building this innovation team and doing other events, meeting colleagues, talking to individuals that are um, highly reputable in the space. And quite frankly, my two years at Deloitte opened up so many doors. And I, and I still have a lot of colleagues that uh, are still with Deloitte and I'm still very thankful for, for all my colleagues that were there. Um, and so ultimately, like the key takeaways, I think, from from my experience in consulting and, and everyone's experience is so different and everyone's story is so different. So like um, just, just real quick, one of my uh, colleagues, for example, he, he also graduated with me. He graduated from RPI, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, and he was he actually spoke Japanese. Um, so if you're bilingual, or trilingual, um, it's really helpful in cybersecurity because especially in consulting, you might have clients that are based in other parts of the world. So because his client was uh, based in Japan and he spoke Japanese, he would fly every two weeks to Japan. And when I mean like everything sort of paid for, you get a corporate charge card and you're able to stay in the nicest hotels, you get the points, you're able to get all those perks um, of sort of being a traveling on the road consultant um, while obviously protecting the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of all your clients' information in many cases. Uh, and so he was able to like, you know, go to across the world several times during the week. The projects he worked on was entirely different than mine. My experience and my colleague's experience, like I had a colleague who, who graduated with a finance background um, and the work that he was doing was in like third party and fourth party risk management. Um, and so his, his experience at, at the firm was entirely different than my experience, which was entirely different than the person next to me. Whereas if you're in industry, for example, you might just like have one particular job or one particular role and then you'll keep like leveling up um, in that one area and sort of become more of a subject matter expert. Um, at Deloitte, they did have that as well. Um, they had sort of what was called like a specialist track versus a generalist track. Um, the specialists had less sales targets. So like when you were to hit a certain level within the organization, you were required to make a certain amount of sales with your clients. Um, I was able to sell several uh, multi-million dollar projects while I was with Deloitte or be part of that process, um, help create the sales work, help create the proposal, help create the statements of work, help create the staffing criteria, looking at um, how many resources do you need to actually implement this, right? Because in many cases, you you had to like look at your clients, ask them maybe a dozen questions in, in a period of like three or four weeks, and then give them a proposal to do the work. Um, and in many cases, you had a forecast, like I need two junior resources, two offshore resources, one manager, and actually forecast the number of hours of work that they would commit to that client per day on a daily and or weekly basis and then forecast like the total cost that we're gonna charge this client for this work is $750,000. And in many cases you had to go to the client and defend to them sort of during this proposal process why they should you know, come with Deloitte or why work with Deloitte or why work with EY or why work with PwC um, in order for you to like win that work. Uh, and winning work is a big thing because what happens is, is that uh, in many cases the clients go back to the team that did the work previously or that they already had big relationships to. Um, so in, in many cases, like if a um, individual had a relationship with one of the big four, whether it was a friend, whether maybe they previously worked there, they're gonna have like an innate bias to use their work or use their team or use their resources. Um, and so, you know, the, the key takeaways I would take from this is like, if you're looking for a lot of challenge, if you're one of the types of people that gets bored sitting there and doing nothing all day, um, and you want to learn a lot across many different domains and have opportunities to do technical and non-technical work, uh, consulting may be a good track for you upon graduation. And many of these companies are hiring like crazy. Um, just like bear in mind that, you know, sometimes these processes, like if you want to get an internship next summer or start full-time next summer, they're going to start the the prior summer ahead. Um, and they also do have some programs like Deloitte does do a, a cybersecurity competition. Uh, previously, you would fly down to, to their training center um, outside of Texas and then uh, the finalists would, would be there. Um, and, and so in many cases, these, these firms will host um, events and opportunities for students and, and collegiate students to uh, get access to them. And, and in my case, 
uh, one of the, the most successful pieces I, I think of trying to get into consulting was just networking with a lot of people that were in consulting. And um, I've definitely connected Logan, for example, with, with several colleagues of mine, uh, especially that were NJIT graduates. Um, and always look at your alumni networks as well, because in many cases, whatever institution you're, you're graduating from, you'll probably have alumni that either currently or previously were at one of the big four, because it's very popular to get exposure and experience at one of those companies. Uh, and at the end of the day, um, you know, I'm really glad to be here. Like I said, consulting was probably one of the best experiences that I had in my life. It gave me so much knowledge over two years that I think is going to pave a, a superior trajectory for my career moving forward. Um, and so far, it, it already has paid off uh, several dividends um, in terms of my personal and professional life. So thank you very much. Uh, we're reaching 2.30 here. And uh, it was a pleasure, pleasure talking today. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Cheers, everyone. Great job. Thank you so much. That was awesome. I uh, really appreciate all that information and uh, questions I'm sure are going to be even better. So uh, I'm, like I said, I'm going to pull up my screen now for a, uh, a reward for everybody for attending uh, Seth's great uh, career talk. Um, so I'm going to pull up my screen real quick. And then uh, while I do this, feel free to drop any questions in the chat and I'll happily read them to uh, Seth so that uh, you can pick his brain because Seth is one of our, uh, or, I mean, every speaker is great. But uh, I'm very happy to have Seth here because, uh, as he talked about, he is one of my mentors. So, um, and I've learned a lot over the years, or over the year, I'd say year. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm sure that you can learn a lot from him as well. So, all right, um, Tech Talk flag. And yeah, for those of you that want to, uh, you know, look me up, add me on LinkedIn. Um, it's just LinkedIn forward slash in slash Seth Kirshner. I put my LinkedIn in the LinkedIn chat as well as the introductions. You can go to SethK.club or my link tree as well. That will all bring me to LinkedIn. And Logan, if it's okay with you, I can just read them right from the Q&A chat and sort sure. of go through them one by one. Um, so are certifications important? Yes. If so, what do you recommend? Uh, this is a phenomenal question. So, um, for example, some organizations such as Deloitte, if you want to make manager, you need to have a certain number of certifications. Um, so, for example, like there's a couple options like CISPI is one of them or Certified Eth Ethical Hacker. Uh, CISPI, I think, is most common. There's also uh, the Certified Information um, Privacy Professional, which is which is becoming more uh, common um, and the, so like they would set a list of certifications and that list was like you you had to meet one of those essentially to become a manager there's obviously exceptions to the norm um, in many cases and so I have a weird perspective on certifications um, and so I've taken a lot of like the SANS classes uh, I really enjoy them you learn so much uh, they're obviously really expensive in many cases my employer paid for them um, as well as other free trainings online, so on and so forth. Um, so for my perspective on certifications is like, in many cases, it will help you prove to a potential hiring manager, like you know the work and you sort of check the box, right? Uh, for me personally, I found them to be a huge waste of my time. Um, I'm not great at test taking traditionally. So uh, when it came to certifications, it was always really hard for me to like pass the test, even though I knew the knowledge and I was able to like hands-on show that I was able to do the work. Um, so in many cases, it, it depends. And I'll say that loosely. Some people are very bold on certifications. You need to have them, you must have them. Hiring managers, especially because in many cases, like when you think about it, the person who's doing the hiring for the organization probably knows nothing about cybersecurity. So when they're interviewing or doing first rounds with the candidates or filtering through 500 resumes, a certification is a really good way for you to stick out the door. But I know people that have their OSCP, their OSCE, um, you know, they, they, they passed all those tests and they still can't get a job. Why? Because in many cases in cybersecurity, it's also about communication. It's not just the technical work and getting the technical work done. That's actually the easiest part about cybersecurity. It's dealing with stakeholders across businesses. And especially if you're in a multinational enterprise, um, you might have a lot of stakeholders. So like as my current job today, um, I, I facilitate communication across um, over 100 stakeholders on a weekly basis. Um, and so it, it's really critical that not only do you have the technical knowledge and you're able to show it, but then you're also able to have that communication piece and, and aspect. So certifications, for example, if you want to go into pen testing, go get your OSCP, go get your um, your G pen uh, or your, you know, wh whatever other certifications are going to help CEH practical, for example, because that's going to show like, you know, the knowledge really well. And for hiring managers, especially, it's going to be like a, a gateway into the front door. Um, and then for 
other individuals, like if you, if you're really good at what you do and you can communicate very effectively to hiring managers, um, or even if you get like recruiters that help you, or if you have contacts with CISOs or other senior leadership, um, if you know what you're talking about, they'll be able to tell. If you have no idea, they'll also be able to tell very fast. Um, so in many cases, I've now interviewed, like, for example, I'm interviewing senior, senior uh, application security engineers right now to join my team, um, people that have 10, 20 years of experience. And I can tell you very fast that uh, you, you can ask people a handful of questions and you can just sift through the bullshit. Like, um, apologize for my language. But in many cases, like, you know, people are just like, oh, I have 10 years, you know, you know, building application security programs. And I'm like, OK, give me four ways that you can defend against a SQL injection. Right. And they'll be like, uh, 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 I don't know. And then I'm like, well, yeah, clearly you're not a good fit for this role because someone who's knowledgeable in the space and that has 10 years of practical hands on experience will know four ways to defend against a SQL injection without even thinking about it, because it's one of like the most common injections that you can do. Right. Um, so in many cases, uh, it, it's really interesting, you know, how certifications can help you and it shows to your company, it shows to your, the industry that you know what you're talking about or just prove it. Um, and so one of my best friends, he actually dropped out of, out of college and now he leads, he's the director of information security at a, at a up and coming startup. Um, and he has no certifications at all. Um, he was, uh, Signia, which is, is one of Israelis like most prestigious incident response, uh, groups. He was Signia's first U S employee. Um, and he was able to do all of that without a single certification. So if you know what you're talking about, you know what you're doing, uh, it's really good. A lot of people get certifications to help deal with imposter syndrome or, for example, if there's audit and regulatory requirements. So some organizations, like, for example, if you're in business continuity or disaster recovery, you need to have a certification. Um, so it depends on your company, depends on the industry. Um, I recommend them if you're someone that's not great at communicating because it's another way to show a hiring manager or your prospective employer that it's a good fit and a stamp you know on your resume check the box um so i'll stop there uh what i would recommend is it depends on what you want to do right there's 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 hundreds of certifications out there um if you want to go into pen testing like i said go get your oscp if you want to go into cloud go you know go to the three public cloud providers and get your um for example aws like solutions architect associate get your security specialty um, so like, it depends on what you want to do. Um, and, and there are like so many certifications now for like almost everything. Um, even for like DevSecOps, for example, if you like really like programming and you want to build out secure coding softwares, there's the CSS LP. Now, um, you can also get your GWAP with the offensive web application security test. Um, and, and also like OSCP, for example, would help in, in, in that case too. Uh, so a lot of the cases, like, even if it's an offensive certification, it will help on the defensive as well. Uh, when I took my uh, SANS 560, which was um, offensive network penetration testing and ethical hacking uh, course, that helped me a lot on the threat and vulnerability management, helping to build out programs, because now I can think like the attacker um, in order to make the defense better. All right. Thank you, uh, Andres. Yeah, great question. Uh, Mike, we have, what tips do you have that apply to consulting in general, people who are in NCS field? So I came from a non-targeted school. Um, Stevens Institute of Technology is not a targeted school for Deloitte, for example. Uh, network like crazy, that's it. Um, I didn't have a background in, uh, you know, it, I didn't have a degree in cybersecurity or computer science or any of that. My degree was in business. Um, and so that, that, that's really what it is. It's network like crazy. Um, and to apply for consulting as well, do like events like capture the flags, get involved, network, um, go, you know, attend, attend events where people like, you know, Deloitte's of the world and PWCs and EYs are, are speaking at, uh, and, and really just network, uh, go on LinkedIn and introduce yourself. And, you know, I'm really interested in working at blank. Um, you know, can I have 20 minutes of your time? I want to learn a couple of things from you. Um, and so I, I also do career coaching. So if anyone's interested, feel free to reach out. Uh, great question, Mike. Um, but yeah, so short, long story short, network. Uh, it, it really does make a difference when you're going to get jobs. Um, we got Dan, very passionate presentation. I'm seeking web mobile dev work. Um, yeah, so most, yeah, so, uh, so the weird part is everywhere will require a location. It's a legal thing. Uh, you can't, it's illegal in taxing. Um, so everywhere is going to have a location, but for example, in consulting, many jobs are entirely remote. Um, you don't need to be in an office. When I was with Deloitte, I was based in New York city. I think I went to the office like four or five times. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I was always at client site, um, or working from home. 
uh, I never really went to the office. So even though it has a location, like for example, Deloitte in every, almost every single state, they have an office in every state. So even though a location might be posted for New York, it's just because they have to do it that way. Um, and so, you know, apply to it, right? Um, and, and obviously because of, um, because of like all the, uh, it, the, the sort of the, the way the world's shifting, a lot of cybersecurity is gonna be remote now. Um, so uh, I, I've even had several conversations with my leadership team, like, listen, if you're trying to get good talent, you're, you're gonna have to be remote. Um, how do you see the CTF flag? Logan, can you put it back up on the screen when you have a chance? I think, uh, um, so once we, we did that, so uh, once it's gone, it's gone. That's how we're playing it out. So sorry if you missed it. Uh, attend future tech talks uh, to get more, but Seth, continue, sorry about that. Okay. Can you give us examples of questions to get a sense of a candidate's ability level in addition to you? Yes. Yeah, so SQL. Yeah. So like, uh, it depends on what you're hiring for, right? So if you're going for like a network security or a, um, SIM job or like an incident response or, or a SOC team, uh, you'll get questions like, you know, what's on port 443. <laughs> like they'll, they'll ask you to like, get, like explain to me the OSI model. Right. Um, when I, so, so some interviews are obviously more behavioral, or some are more technical. Uh, I try to like ask candidates questions like, tell me about an experience where you had to present something very technical to, 50, to over 50 people. <laughs> because a lot of the times like you, you have to be able to speak very technical terms and layman's terms. Um, and so that, that might be a good question to ask candidates. Uh, um, I might ask them, you know, get, like explain to me how you would build out a DevSecOps program. Like very open-ended. Um, my hardest question when I was interviewing was actually with Deloitte. They gave me one of my most challenging questions. It was it was behavioral in nature, but it was almost like a simulation. So very recently, in back in 2017, the Dyn DYN, there was a, a DNS network attack that brought down um, a, quite a lot of the the Northeast region of the world um, of, of America. I mean. Uh, and so they would give me a question, like, how do you defend against the Dyn attack? Like that was like a multi-million dollar question at the time, but it's just to get to see people like how the, the way that you think. Um, and so in many cases, like a lot of technical questions that I got were like, um, you know, uh, like for example, if you wanted to use Nmap to, to run a port scan, like give me an Nmap, uh, you know, script. <laughs> like tell me an Nmap script and what it does and how it works. Um, like that's a very common question, for example. Um, if you're in pen testing, right, they might ask you uh, questions about Metasploit. They might ask you questions around Burp Suite. Um, I've, I've tricked a lot of people too. Like, um, you know, a lot of the times people will have on their resume, like, oh, I know SQL really well, um, or like SQL servers. And like, I'll come in here from a data security point of view and be like, okay, so explain to me what transparent data encryption is. And a lot of like even very senior people that have spent a lot of time in SQL have no idea what transparent data encryption is. Um, but that's essentially what they use to secure data at rest within <laughs> within SQL servers. So um, it, it depends on what you're interviewing for. And questions can range, you know, a wide array. Um, expect trick questions, not to trick you, but to see A, how much do you actually know? Um, and B, like, what is your thought process like, even if you have no idea what the thing is or how does it mean? So um, another question, like, how would you defend against the solar wind attack that like just happened, right? Um, if you were going for a cloud security job, they might ask you, you know, explain to me how Azure Sentinel works. Um, and then that that's a really good way to figure out, um, you know, what type of interview questions that you're going to have moving forward. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, it, it's really dependent on the role. Every hiring manager is different. Some of them are really difficult uh, purposely, and some of them are, are you know, really easy. Um, they, people, people are just looking for good candidates across the board. There's a huge talent gap in cybersecurity alone. So as an uh, undergraduate, you know, look for roles and opportunities that you think you'll like, whether it's industry specific, whether it's company specific, um, and apply. You never know what's going to happen. Oh, great question, Jess. Um, Yeah, no, no. So SolarWinds is a is a network security tool uh, or a network tool, a networking tool. Um, and there there was a, actually like a huge exploit recently <laughs> um, that there, a huge breach in the public. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, all, all great questions. And so, guys, thank you so much. Feel free to 
uh, add me on LinkedIn, like I said, uh, hit me up with any additional questions. If you want tips and tricks on, on how to land sort of your dream job at your dream company. Um, like I said, I was someone who came with very little background in cybersecurity into a cybersecurity role, learn on the job, take a lot of trainings, attend industry events. Uh, for me now, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I stay in touch with a lot of friends. Um, I'm quite often on Clubhouse too. We have a lot of uh, like cybersecurity rooms on Clubhouse on a regular basis. Um, I've had a chance to meet dozens and dozens of chief information security officers, um, many of them virtually, many of them in person, um, as well as, as industry experts and, and hear from them, Nate Krebs um, and all of those folks. Uh, and so really we, we live in an exciting time where like now that everything's virtual, like you can, you can learn so much so fast online. Um, there's awesome events, CTS that you can do to sort of, you know, level up your level up your experience knowledge. And then there's also like a ton of online course. Um, a, a lot of them are free now. There's so much you can learn on YouTube on how to actually defend against exploits or perform exploits. Um, and just remember if you are doing like offensive security, uh, uh, you know, do it responsibly. Um, because you, you don't want to be that person getting in trouble for doing things that are that are malicious and with unintention. Um, and so nonetheless, uh, thanks again for your time today. This was awesome. And like I said, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out. Cheers, everyone.